A while ago, as in two years ago, I was talking to someone about my love for cruise ships and they said that they would never go on a cruise ship because they're afraid of it sinking. I was a bit turned off by this because, well, that's a really dumb argument. Cruise ships sink very rarely, and if they do sink, there are about a million safety features to make sure that you and all the other passengers get off in less than 30 minutes. Also, I made this video a while ago talking about every cruise ship that ever sank, and about why you shouldn't be afraid of cruise ships. Now, you may say that me listing every cruise ship that has ever sunk and saying, go on cruise ships, is a bad idea, and you were probably right, but my message was that there's been so few cruise ships that have ever sank that you can fit them all into one video explaining their all, all their sinkings. And half of the cruise ships that have sunk have been cruise ships where no one was on them and they sank because they were a pile of junk going to the scrapyard. Cruise ships are some of the most safe things you can go on. They're safer than planes, they're safer than trains, and they're much, much safer than cars. And you may think, well, that's just because there's not a lot of cruise ships in the world. I mean, if we think of cruise ships as these big, bulky vacation machines that are like floating hotels, then you could say that there are about 360 of them around the world, including smaller expedition ships. But even these small ships in Vietnam are technically cruise ships, and this tugboat as well is also technically a cruise ship. So there are indeed quite a lot of cruise ships in the world. Yes, there is fewer cruise ships than planes, but that does not negate the fact that cruise ships are much safer than planes. This changes, of course, if we add ocean liners to the mix, but that is simply because there's been a lot more ocean liners throughout the past, and also, ocean liners have lasted longer than planes, as in they began before planes. They definitely won't outlive them, because I think that there will be a day when all ocean liners are gone, and that day is coming because even the world's newest ocean liner is still 20 years old. Here is a spreadsheet I made a while ago of every single cruise ship that has ever sank. Now you may think, wow, that's actually quite a bit of them, but not really, because you can see a lot of them had no deaths. Actually, vast majority of them had no deaths. And a lot of them also sank well under tow to a scrapyard. Let's take an example of one of these. The SS Constitution was a former American ocean liner that wound it up as a job for American Hawaiian cruises. Eventually, though, she had to be scrapped, and in 1997, she was under tow to the shipbreakers in India, but during the night, she ended up taking on water and sank by the stern. The wreck has never been visited, and she sank somewhere near Hawaii. The exact location isn't known but south southwest of Hawaii is what I've heard. Still though, no one was on the ship, and no one died on the ship, of course, so you can't really count it as a cruise ship disaster, despite the fact that it did, of course, sink. And as you can see from the spreadsheet, the amount of people that have actually died on a cruise ship sinking is extremely low. 176 people, most of those coming from one disaster, the Laconia, which caught fire and sank in the 1960s. Mike Brady has a pretty interesting video about that one on Ocean Liner Designs. Anyways, most cruise ship sinkings have less than 10 people die. This is because ships take a long time to sink, so you have time to get off, and in most cruise ship sinkings, it takes over five hours for the ship to sink. In the case of the Sea Diamond and the Oceanos, even longer. In fact, only one cruise ship ever sinks every five years, and there has not been a cruise ship sinking in 12 years. So, it's pretty ignorant to think that you're going to be the next one, or that you are going to be on a cruise ship sinking. Of course, you should always do the safety briefings and know where to go in case there is an emergency. But the vast likelihood is that there is not going to be any sort of emergency on your cruise. If we were to think of cruise ships as these big giant floating skyscrapers and not the old converted ocean liners that they historically were, then there's only ever been one of those to sink, and that was this ship, the Costa Concordia in 2012, and that only had 32 people die. 
In fact, according to Google, between 2017 and 2021, there were about 750 commercial plane accidents, but there were exactly zero cruise ship sinkings or any major cruise ship incidents. You're more likely to die on the plane crash to the cruise rather than die on the cruise itself, because that's happened before. Most of the passengers of the Concorde when it crashed were going to a cruise in the Caribbean. With plane crashes, it happens quick. It's usually a few seconds to a minute of terror, but on cruise ships, it's usually hours. And in the air, no one can help you. The people that board the plane when it takes off are the people that are going to get off the plane when it lands. But with cruise ships, ships can easily come and help you, and they can wait beside you as you need help. But with planes, they can't really do that. So yeah, the likelihood of you dying on a cruise ship sinking is extremely unlikely, but let's give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that with the magical stick of my wand, a hole was punctured in one of the compartments of a cruise ship. How would that play out? Well, the ship might not even sink at all. If a hole is punctured in only one of the ship's watertight compartments, it won't flood to the rest. Watertight compartments are basically doors in the ship that mean that if one area of the ship floods, you can close off the other areas and the rest of it won't flood. That has actually saved ships in the past. My favorite ship, the Monarch of the Seas, hit rocks once off St. Martin, but they closed all the watertight compartments and the ship was saved. It was repaired later on and no one died, which is pretty remarkable. But let's give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say four holes are breached in your ship. What happens then? The ship is going to sink. How do you get off? Well, for this, we're going to use a real world example. The Costa Concordia was an Italian cruise ship that hit rocks on January 13th, 2012. The rocks punctured the ship's hull enough that they knew the ship was going to sink. And they flooded enough watertight compartments to shut off the engines and generators. So, eventually, the ship found shore and went there. The ship began to tilt on one side, meaning that one side's lifeboats were completely unusable. Eventually, the ship capsized fully on the rocks. Even with all these odds, it seems like everyone on the ship should have died, but only 32 people died as mentioned earlier. A common misconception is that after the Titanic sank, ships were required to carry lifeboats for everyone. While that was true in the ensuing few years, eventually it was reduced back to 72% of the passengers. But that doesn't seem right, because cruise ships today have enough room for everyone, right? Well, yes, that's because 38% of the people in the boats are held in life rafts, or it can be more, it can be less, sometimes ships are entirely full of these things instead of lifeboats. But yes, cruise ships don't need to carry lifeboats for everyone, but they do need to carry enough lifeboats and life rafts for everyone. In fact, ships are actually required to carry enough space on them for 120, or something around there, percent. And so, in the Concordia's case, when she sank, there was still enough life rafts on one side to get almost everyone off. And the ship was also really close to shore, so people could simply jump off and swim to shore. But I would not recommend that. As mentioned before, it only takes a few seconds to a minute for a plane to crash, but it takes much longer for a cruise ship to sink because of the watertight compartments and the water having to flood all around. A good example of this would be the Sea Diamond and the Oceanos, with the Sea Diamond in particular taking over 24 hours to sink and the Oceanos taking 19 hours to sink. In fact, the Oceanos was in an even more dangerous situation than the Costa Concordia. The ship began sinking after water flooded one of the ship's sea chests. You don't need to know what that is. But anyways, all of the crew took the boats and their luggage and left the passengers with no lifeboats, not even any of those life rafts. So the entertainment crew, which was still on the ship, called for help and eventually, helicopters came and every single person on the Oceanos was able to be rescued. 
Years later, one of the people on the Oceanos would also be on the Achille Lara when it sank. Moss Hills ended up also saving hundreds of people on the Achille Lara as well. Then he was also a passenger on the Concordia. But what about this ship you may be saying? Well, that's actually a ferry, and yes, ferries do get that big. In fact, they get a lot bigger. Anyways, unfortunately, big car ferries do have a much worse safety record than cruise ships. I'm not saying you shouldn't go on ferries, but I'm saying that ferries are a lot less safe than cruise ships because they have big open car decks that can flood, and they're susceptible to being tipped over due to the amount of cars on them. In fact, that has happened before. <clears throat> Say well. But ferries are still very safe, and they've been getting safer. It's just that a lot of ferries in third world countries tend to prioritize getting as many people and cargo on the ship rather than safety. Cruising is just inherently more safer than ferries because there's more incentive for ferry companies to be not safe. But there are still many reasons one can have for not wanting to go on a cruise ship. One, it'll be too cluttered and loud. I can kind of see what you're getting at because in most ships, people crowd around certain areas and it can get quite noisy and loud. On most ships, there are areas not a lot of people go to where you can chill for some alone time, except on Royal Caribbean ships where it's mostly just all crowded and loud and very hard to get away from the action. But what about all this you say? Certainly this should mean that cruise ships are really unsafe. Well, news media would not report on a cruise if nothing happened and if it went completely fine. Because that's not how news media gets clicks and attention. So, these are isolated incidents that happen rarely. Chances are that if you go on your cruise, it'll be completely fine and nothing will happen. Only in rare circumstance does something go wrong, and only in extremely rare circumstances does the ship sink. And if you're saying cruising isn't for you, I can also kind of see where you're coming from. If you don't like to move around and you just want to chill at a resort that stays still the entire time, then yeah, cruising is not right for you. And if you just want to go to one city or place, then cruising is also not right for you because the ship stops at many places. Still, there are almost cruises for everyone. There's expedition cruises, there's big cruise ships, there's little ships, there's short cruises, there's long cruises, there's fancy cruises, there's non-fancy cruises, and there's basically any sort of cruise you could imagine that you want. It exists. Cruise ships take a long time to sink. They have enough lifeboats and life rafts combined to save everyone on board, plus more. They usually have trained crews that can do everything right, usually, and they also have crews that practice how to save people's lives on a cruise ship sinking every single week. If something bad happens, the crew will be there to make sure that you are safe, and chances are nothing bad will happen. Ship safety has evolved over thousands of years versus trains and planes which have only evolved over just over a hundred years. As mentioned before, the vast majority of cruise ships sink with zero deaths or even one or two deaths. Even when stranded at the bottom of Antarctica, like the MS Explorer was in 2007, not a single person died. Cruise ships are incredibly safe. Plus, when you do go on a cruise ship, why think about what could go wrong? Yes, it is Good to have a plan for if something does go wrong, but how about enjoy your vacation instead of spend time worrying what could happen? In short, the chances of you getting on a cruise ship sinking is extremely rare, and the chances of you dying on one are extremely unlikely as well. Cruise ship safety has evolved so much since then. If anything, the stories of the past should show how far cruise ships have come, and to never repeat history's mistakes. So, get out there, go on a cruise, and I think you'll enjoy it. See you guys later.